fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles confirming the word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Who do you say that I am? I, I like the way Jesus asked that question. Who do you say that I am? And he uses the two words, I am. I am. Do you remember when Moses, it was God was sending Moses to deliver the children out of Israel, uh, out of Egypt, correction? And, and, and he, Moses said unto the Lord, who shall I say sent me? He said, just tell him I am. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When we look at this passage of scripture, it is one of the most dramatic revelations ever made. It is also one of the most demanding questions ever asked. It is demanding because the answer given determines a person's eternal destiny. Uh, how a person answers the question determines whether he or she will spend eternity or where he or she will spend eternity with God in heaven or apart from God in hell. No, there is only one answer to the question that could qualify a person for heaven. And that is thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. See, when Jesus asked this question, who do you say that I am? It was not a sign of his ignorance. See, he knew all things, including what was on the mind of his disciples. That the question was not uh, motivated by some type of self-conceit or vanity. He had no desire for compliments. He wasn't looking for the disciples to say, oh, Lord, you, 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 you know, he wasn't looking for that. See, the question was aimed at provoking the disciples to consider the level of their faith. Amen. See, he's talking to you and I. Yes, sir. Who do you say that I am? Yes. See, he's asking me everything you've seen, who do you say that I am? If you ask my grandmother, my grandmother will just to say, will simply say he's a way maker. Yes. Right, he's company in the midnight hour. He, he's a bridge over troubled waters. She, she would just simply say, whatever you need him to be, that is what he is. See, it's not enough to believe in Jesus, but you must be certain that the Jesus you believe in is the right Jesus. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing the Christ of God who is revealed in the New Testament. Who do you say that I am? Jesus Christ, he was born of a supernatural birth. The prophet Isaiah predicted that he would be born of a virgin 700 years before his birth. In Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse, it says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I like the way the, the Bible describes it, it uh, uh, his birth. He said that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. See, that means a, a lot. Yeah. I believe the reason that Jesus asked the disciples, who do, you, who do you say that I am? They were at a point where the disciples had seen Jesus do all types of miracles. Yeah. And, and, and now with all of this, Jesus said, who do you say that I am? See, it is the question uh, to you and I, it comes a point in your life that you've seen God make so many moves and so many miracles in your life. Who do you say that he is? And, and so you, you've got to understand God has moved in ways that you can't even sometimes explain to people in your life. When you look at this particular scripture, I read uh, 
uh, Matthew, the 15th correction, the 16th chapter, verses 13 through 18. But to really understand what the disciples really had seen through Jesus Christ, if you go back to that 12th chapter, the Bible said that Jesus had entered into the temple and there was a man with a withered hand. And the Bible said that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were waiting to see if Jesus was going to heal him on the Sabbath. But Jesus looked up, Bishop, and he said, is it right to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath? And he told the man to stretch forth his hand, and he was made whole. It was, his hand was just like the other one. When, when you get into the 15th chapter, the Bible talks about that Jesus came nigh to the Sea of Galilee, and he went up into a mountain, and he sat down, and a great multitude came unto him, having with them those that were lame, those that were blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And they cast them down at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus healed them. See, they wanted to know, who is this man called Jesus? The, the Bible goes on to say, in so much that the multitude wondered when they saw that the dumb to speak, the maimed to be made whole, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. He was doing it. The Bible goes on in that 15th chapter and, and said Jesus had been preaching for three days and it was time for him to depart. And Jesus told him, no, don't send them away home. They've been with us for three days and I don't want them to leave fasting, but they may faint on the way. But the disciples said, Lord, how can we feed all these people? And Jesus said, what do you have? And he said, seven uh, uh, loaves of bread and a few fish. And Jesus said, give it to me. And he took it and he broke it and he blessed it. And the Bible said that he had them sit down and he passed it to the disciples. And the disciples passed it to the people. And they all did eat until they were filled full. And the Bible said that they did eat. There were 4,000 men besides women and children. God has blessed them. They've seen things God that Jesus do that, that there's no explanation. And still some people need a sign from God before they can give their life or start following Jesus fully. And when we got into, or when we move into the 16th chapter, the Bible says that the Pharisees, uh, also with the Sadducees came tempting, uh, desire that, that, that he would show them a sign from heaven. The Pharisees and the Sadducees demanded a sign from heaven, and they tried to explain away Jesus' other miracles as some slight, he, he did a trick. I don't know how he did it, but he, he, he did a trick or something. Uh, it was just a coincidence that the person was healed or the use of some evil power but they believe that only God can do a sign from the sky. If I look up and something happened in the sky, then I will believe it. But the Bible goes on to say that Jesus said unto them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after signs, and there shall be no sign, there, there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet of Jonah. And he left them and departed. I, I looked that up. The, pride, the sign of the prophet of Jonah. Remember when Jesus said, just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days. Y'all, many people like these Jewish leaders, they say they want to see a miracle so that they can believe in Jesus. But Jesus knew that a miracle wouldn't convince people. You know, they, they, they skeptic. They, they, they're just not going to believe. He had already healed the sick. He raised the dead. He fed thousands of people, and they still wanted 
him to prove himself. The question this morning is, do you doubt Christ because you haven't seen a miracle? Do you expect God to prove himself to you before you believe? Remember when Jesus showed himself to doubt Thomas? He came into the room. He said, see, the nail prints in my hand. He said, put your, put your hand in, in my side. Yeah. He goes on to say, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they believe. We, we don't need signs. You don't need you know what God has done for you. You know how God has moved in your life. Yeah. There's somebody in here just like me. You are on your way to hell. Yeah. And you call out in the name of yeah. You call out in the name of Jesus and he turned your whole life around. There's somebody that was on that sick bed and the doctor said, there's nothing else we can do. But when you call on the name of Jesus, Jesus, some kind of way you get up and start moving under your own power. It's in that name. See, there's power no matter what you go. If you just call on the name of Jesus, this is how we get into our text. Because the Bible says when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, uh, that he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? See, people today will give you all kinds of answers on who Jesus is, but that's not to me. When Jesus asked his disciples, who, the, uh, who do people say that I am? They replied with four different answers. They said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elijah. Others say that you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. The disciples answered the question with the common view of that day. See, that's the way they thought. That this can't be the Son of God. He, this got to be somebody that came back from the dead. Now, we have seen great miracles in our life, but, but this guy is nothing special. Somebody must be in him. Uh, the prophets were great. And so they always call, that's why some people say uh, Jesus was just a prophet. Well, the prophets were great. In, in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, the 18th verse, it, it says this, I will raise them up a prophet from among them, uh, from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my word in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command them to say. See, that was, that was the day. Whenever they were confused, they would just say, well, it must be one of the prophets. Uh, it must be that one of the prophets that came back. The, the Bible goes on in John, the first chapter, that when John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness, they thought he might be the Christ. The, the Bible said that they sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem, and they asked him, who are thou? And the Bible said he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are, are you Elijah? See, here we go again. And, and he said, I'm not. He said, uh, are you one of the prophets? Or are you that prophet? And he answered, no. And, and they said unto him, well, well, who art thou? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And they asked him and said unto him, well, why baptize then? And he said, uh, he said, if thou be not the Christ, he says, nor Elijah or either other, other prophet. And John the Baptist said unto him, I baptize with water, but it's one coming after me yeah, yeah. that will baptize with fire and the Holy Ghost. He said, one that is preferred above me. I am not worthy to bend down and unloose his sandals. He said, he's coming. And as we get back into our text, in that 15th chapter, Jesus then turns and he said, but who say ye that I am? And then Jesus thought the time was right for his disciples that they had seen enough. 
you, you got enough evidence at this point. Who, who, who do you say? And, and he put them on the spot and he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Yeah. The Bible says that Peter stepped forward and he said, thou art the Christ, yeah. the son of the little Lord Jesus, the living God in the Hebrew vernacular to be a son was to share all the father's qualities and inherit the father's privileges and power. No one dared call himself the son of God. It, it would be, he would be guilty of blasphemy. See, for Peter to give Jesus this title meant that Jesus was a worthy object of worship. That when you saw Jesus, you needed to fall down and worship him. Jesus didn't object when Peter said that thou art the Christ. As a matter of fact, he praised him saying, Blessed art thou, Simon book Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. See, you got to understand that you've seen enough the God moving, not only in your life, but when in people's lives, you know. There's some things that have happened that you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side that it would have never happened. And then some people still say, Reverend, I can believe in God, but I have a problem when you say believe in Jesus. But Jesus himself, he cleared that up. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place. And if I go to prepare a place uh, for, uh, for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I like the way he ended. He said, for where I am, there you will be also. Jesus spoke with authority. He spoke like I'm God. He says that I am the living water. I am the light of the world. Who is this Jesus? He was the standard of an absolute righteousness. When Jesus Christ walked this earth, he was perfect. He never sinned in thought, word, or deed. He was the only perfect ten to ever live on this earth. He never had an evil thought. He never said an evil, evil word. He never cheated. He never lied. He never procrastinated. He never got bitter. He never lost his temper. He never lusted. He never sought an easy way out. He never bit the truth. He never cursed. He never turned his back on the thing. He never deviated from the slightest degree of the path and of his father's will. Who is this Jesus? He was God and man. He was fully God and he was Yeah. 
the two standing in our place and taking punishment, bearing our sins in his body. The Bible said that he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, that he was taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. The one that knew no sin, they looked him all night long. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They put a scarlet robe on him.
they took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the New Testament. Drink in remembrance of me. And he closed it out by saying, as often as you eat this bread and drink this drink, you do show my death to my return. Amen. Amen. For those that are watching us on live stream, we want to just remind you that we'll be in our prayer call on Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. And then again on Friday morning at 6 a.m. And then back here next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.